everyone, Peg put out a cool product called the Quick Chase Deck as part of the Pathfinder series. And that allows you to run a chase using a deck of cards. It's really fun. Um, and you'd obviously want to run it with your online games just like you would in person. But that's a struggle, right? Because now you need to put it into the system and you need to use the card playing of the of the system. And I use Foundry. And one of the things with Foundry is it doesn't have a great card mechanic as far as the UI goes. Um, so what I wanted to do today is talk about how I'm using the Quick Chase deck in Foundry with scripts to make it a little easier. Everyone, it's Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. We'd love your support. We'd love you to like, subscribe, all that good stuff that we talk about on YouTube. So what do I want to do today? I want to talk about importing, using, and some scripts I wrote to make the chase deck look nice um, and make it easy. Uh, one of the things I mentioned that Foundry's got a limitation, and the limitation's really around the UI for card decks, um, discard piles, people's hands. It's not really set up for um, if you've got a card that you need to read it. It's not really set up for you to... Um, one of the things in the chase deck is you need to play the card face down, and then uh, it gets turned face up. Um, so it's not really good at that because of the UI and the way the UI is set up, and then you have to tell it to play it to a particular deck and, or a particular pile. Um, you have to choose all these settings. So I made a script to make it super, super easy. So let's go ahead and look at that. So let's go ahead and look at the screen here of Foundry. And what I wanna do is create a, macro, a couple of macros that allow me to easily do a chase deck. Now, I did a, a, a video just last time called um, Using Adventure Decks, Loading and Using Adventure Decks in uh, Foundry, and it's the same process to load a deck. So I found a script that automatically loads your assets. So if you have a file per, per um, card, and you can get those digital assets. I think Peg sells them. You might have gotten them through your Kickstarter. I got my Pathfinder Quick Chase cards through the Pathfinder Kickstarter that I joined. Um, and so if you've got those digital assets, it's really super easy to load them. The this, this script I've already loaded in, um, and you load a script into Foundry by, by copying and pasting the text of the script into the script box. So if I go and do an edit, just for those who don't know, you would go and you would call this a script, you name it, and then you would copy all the code from your text file that you download into the box, and then you'd save the macro. So this script is super easy. You would just go ahead and you would just pick the folder that has your card assets in. So you need to get the card assets into your assets into your Foundry system. I run Foundry local, so I just copied them into a data directory in my world. If you're running Foundry on a server, you probably have to have TP in and then copy the cards over. Um, but if you get them copied, you'd pick the directory. And then once you pick the directory, you would um, pick the deck name. That is the deck name that you called it. So you'll create the deck with a name then you'd use that name here. The back image, you'd give it a name, and then you'd pick the back image, um, the back of the card image, which comes again with the digital assets. So I won't do that because I've already loaded the deck. And if you want to see me actually load a deck, you can go to that adventure card, um, adventure deck video that I just did. So if we go look at the decks, we have a requirement. So I loaded my chase deck in already. And so I have my chase deck with all the chase cards. Now mine are named, and I went ahead and I, in my digital assets, I renamed every card to the name on the card, um, the file name, because the script that I use uses the file name as the name of the card. So you may want to do that before you import the assets. It's not super critical, but I, I did it. So um, maybe you'll want to do that too. So the next thing we do is once we loaded the deck, we need to set up for a chase deck. So like I mentioned, we need to play to... Um, uh, a face down on the table first, and then we flip the cards um, after that. So how do I do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of, uh, of hands and discard piles. So I've already created them, but um, you would go and what we need to have 
is we need to have a chase discard pile, which is where they finally go after they're played. I have a thing I call chase table, which is the discard pile that has them face down. Um, and then you need a couple of chase hands. That, and so I have a GM chase hand, and that's the hand of the GM that's going to hold the cards. And then I also have a player two chase hand, which is the f hand that the player, and I only have one player, player two, will have their cards in. So we create these three um, using the standard procedure in, um, in Foundry. And, so it, and what we would do is we create a card stack for each one of these. Um, we would name it as we need it, and then we'd call it a deck for when we're doing the chase deck, a hand for the hand for the player, and then a pile for those discard piles. And so now that we have that, we just want to have an easy-to-use script. So I'll show you why I created these scripts. So let's take a look at the GM hand here, GM chase card hand. And I already got a couple of cards in it, and you can see I can't read them. And they're not easy to play. If I want to look at them, I would go here. Now I can see them. If I want to play them, I have to, you know, which which thing am I putting it in? I got to be careful. It's really not that intuitive to, to do. So we're not going to use that. We're going to create a script. So there's two scripts that I'm going to use. One script is the hand script that allows the players to read the card and play the cards from their hand. The second script is a script just for the game master so that when it comes time to flip the cards onto the table, he can flip them out onto the table. And I do it as tiles so that they're on the page, um, on the screen, and all the players can see them. Um, so the first script is a play your card script. And the way that works is it pops up, you can see the cards, you can choose which card to play by checking the box, and then you play the card. And we need to set the script up. So I'll have it in the descriptions, this card um, playing script that you can load. And so what we would do is we'd create a macro, call it play, uh, play a chase card, call it a script, um, and then we would copy and paste that code. So now there's some setup that needs to be done in this. Um, and so the first thing is we need to do our hand. And then again, remember I said for the GM, I've got a GM chase hand. So I would put the name of that hand, whatever you called it. Then I need the discard name, and this will be the face down pile. And so in my case, it's chase table. And then the last thing I need to do is put the deck name in, which is chase deck. That's the deck we created that has all our chase cards in it. And then the other thing that we need to set in this script is play to table. If it's false, it immediately just uh, shows the card in the chat window so everybody can see it. And that's really useful for the adventure deck. So that same script I used for the adventure deck um, video uh, that I just put out previous to this one. But in this case, we wanna say true. So what this means is it sends it to the discard pile without turning it face up, without showing the other players. It's just in the discard pile. So we need to make sure we set that properly. Um, and so then the second, the second script we need is only for the game master. So each player would create a script on their side and copy and paste, set their hand correctly, set the set the different um, set the table and set the um, the deck properly in their script as well um, on their side. There's one more script the GM needs, and this one is called is really the one that displays the chase card. And this is display the table script. Again, I'll have these a link in the description. You take that, that table uh, or this script, you copy it in, and then this has some configuration for it. And so this only has one configuration, which is um, pile to play name, which is chase table. So this is the pile that the players played their cards in. And the second one is the discard, and we call it chase discard. So the cards go, the process is from the hand, it goes to the table. The table, we flip them over, and as we flip them over, we take them from the table and put them in the discard pile. And that's the workflow. So what do these scripts do? Well, so I've got, so I've got my script set up for playing my chase card. And so I already have two chase cards, but I could draw a chase card just by clicking draw. And then it would draw a card. The script doesn't allow you to specify how many cards. It's a limitation. Um, I was trying to keep it simple um, instead of having a, yet another another parameter that you enter. Um, but if you don't like that and you know scripting, you can you can update it. Um, and so now we have our three our three um, 
chase cards. So in the way the chase process goes is we play, and Eric and I have a video on the Pathfinder chase deck. You can find that um, in our videos to show you how to, how to use it. Um, so then we would play one of our cards. And so we play the card. It doesn't appear, nobody sees it, um, because we're playing to that table that's face down. And so when, after all the players play their card, which is what they're required, the game master then is going to display them. And this is where this script that I mentioned, this play script that we copied in just for playing, displaying the cards. And when you click on that, the cards get displayed to the table. So if you got five players, there'd be five cards, and then you would run the chase like normal. So we have a script that's to play the cards. Again, it'll be in the description. We copy and paste that. We change the configuration. We make sure we have three things that we need. We need a hand for each player. We need our card deck that has the cards. And then we need this table or this table that is the face down table. And then I guess we need one more thing, which is the discard pile. And that we're gonna discard the cards ultimately too. So you need those items. Um, so if we look at the player side of it, you know, like I mentioned, um, the players you can see sees sees the card. The player itself would also set up their chase card, and we copy again, copy and paste. But you can see that their player two chase hand is what they would use, and so they have a different hand that they're using, and so they can draw. So we can draw a card from our chase deck, and we've got our card. Um, so one of the things that we would do that the game master is required. So is once we do a round, he would go to the tiles, pick up the cards, delete them from the table. Um, so everybody would play their card. Game master displays the card. So if we go to our player, player has their card. They're going to play their card. We go to the game master. Game Master plays their chase card because they're doing the bad guys in the chase. And so now everybody's played their place, their card down. The Game Master runs the script that displays them, and now we can run the chase. Super simple. So we create a cup, we create a deck for our chase cards. We load it in with the script that I'll also provide a link to. We then create a table, which is a pile. So that's for our discard face down. Then we create a discard pile, which is for after they're displayed, that's the final discard pile. And then we create a hand for each player. And when we copy and paste the scripts, we just configure them properly. And then we are good to go. And we now have a nice UI. We can play our chase deck the way it's supposed to be with uh, playing them down on a table. It works out pretty well and it's, it's pretty nice. Um, so again, I think you can get those assets from PEG. Um, I think they may even have a deck you can just buy and load, but I've got the assets, so I'm going to I'm going to use them. So um, once again, I appreciate everybody watching. This is Tabletop Tango. I'm Carl. Look at the bubbles. Do the stuff, and we will catch you Adventure next time. Thanks so much. Fighting monsters out of our league. We'll roll the dice and raise. Nice, a plus two and I might succeed. Whether Cthulhu or D&D, or what's on drive.